spent many years as a newsman traveling in Central and Tropical America. And I think I understand something of what this part of the world means to us. But before we show you some of the reasons why the Kremlin must hate bananas, let's glance at a map of Central America, where most of the fruit comes from. Central America is just what its name implies, the heart of the Americas. A few days by ship from the United States, a few hours by plane, or a few minutes by guided missile. And here in the very center of this vast area is one of the vital and strategic waterways of the free world, the Panama Canal. Little wonder then that the leaders in the Kremlin are determined to establish a political if not a military bridgehead in this area. But the communists are having a difficult time indeed to infiltrate and control any of the republics of Central America. One reason is the church with its Christian customs and traditions, which continues to be a strong bulwark against the growth of atheistic communism. And these countries have been vigorously expanding their educational systems and providing their young people with better school facilities. Local business leaders are creating new jobs that help raise the standard of living of the people of the tropics. Large amounts of private capital from the United States are being invested to build new industrial and agricultural enterprises which help to strengthen the economy of Central America. And therefore, the agents of international communism have selected the United Fruit Company as a prime target of attack. And here are some of the reasons. In its operations in Guatemala, Honduras, Costa Rica, Panama, Ecuador, and Colombia, United Fruit has put to useful production hundreds of thousands of acres of otherwise unproductive tropical lands. It has created jobs for thousands of workers providing housing, schools, hospital facilities, and churches. By research and hard work, it has learned how to combat diseases that endanger bananas and other crops vital to these lands. In short, we have skilled management and capital from the north working with the willing hands and the good earth of the tropics. No wonder then red leaders detest and fear the company that grows, ships, and markets bananas so successfully. And then in the beautiful Zamorana Valley in Honduras, there is a very special reason why they must hate bananas in Moscow. That reason is the Pan-American School of Agriculture, which was established in 1943 by the United Fruit Company. Since 1943, United Fruit has appropriated some six million dollars for the establishment and continuance of this magnificent educational institution, which is devoted to training young men in the techniques of modern farming and animal husbandry. Each year, 160 young men from Spanish-speaking republics attend this school on three-year full scholarships. All expenses paid, too. Even laundry is washed and ironed for the boys without charge. Director of the school from its founding in 1943 till his retirement in 1957 was Dr. Wilson E. Popeno. Dr. Popeno is a sort of combination, Mr. Chips and Johnny Appleseed of the tropics, a man who has dedicated most of his life to the betterment of Central America. Dr. Pop, as the boys have always called him, based the school's entire program on the principle of learning by doing. Students are up at 5.30 every morning except Sunday. They're out in the fields by 6.30, where they work until lunchtime. One of the first things the boys learn is to investigate soil conditions. A simple, inexpensive auger may reveal information about the soil that can spell the difference between a crop failure or success. 
Irrigation is necessary in many sections of the tropics. Long dry seasons often last for six months at a time. So the boys learn how to apply the principles of surface irrigation to increase the yield of the land. If a boy asks why he has to work so hard in the fields, he's told that if he ever manages a farm, he'll know how much work a laborer ought to accomplish in a day. They learn animal husbandry with emphasis on the care and breeding of pigs. Pork is one of the principal meat diets in tropical America. They discover firsthand how modern medicines make for healthier, more productive stock. The study of dairying is most important too. Throughout many parts of tropical America, there's a scarcity of milk and dairy products. Several boys from the remotest districts of Panama, Honduras, Nicaragua, and other countries have never seen a modern dairy nor heard of a milking machine. Learning to milk a cow properly by machine or hand, as well as handling milk and butter hygienically, are basic in the education of every student. When the boys return to their communities, they will know the value of pasteurized milk for children. And if they ever have a dairy of their own, they'll know how to operate it at a profit. In poultry, too, the Zamorana trained boy becomes an expert. However, even after three years of study, there remains the ancient question as to which came first. The chicken or the egg? Few jobs in tropical America are harder than cutting sugar cane with a machete. Yet the boys take great pride in their ability to stand up to hard work in the fields from early in the morning to lunchtime. After lunch, they study with highly trained teachers to learn enough elementary physics, chemistry, and mathematics for a farmer's needs. They study English. They learn to reason, to communicate with one another. The son of the president of one Central American country may share a room with the son of a small farmer from another. This has happened more than once. Wealth or position are of no importance here. But perhaps the most important thing the boys learn who live and work together here is respect. Respect for each other and for the nations they represent. A boy is judged by how well he can handle a team of oxen or a tractor, or a problem in the dissection of a steer. Not that all is work and study. There are days when a boy can prove what other skills he has. And nights around a campfire reflect the good fellowship that exists among boys from a dozen different countries. The friendships built here recognize no national borders. To have finished the three-year course and to stand and receive a diploma from the hands of a visiting dignitary, that is a moment of true achievement and the beginning of a life of service. Over 500 graduates of the school are in agricultural work. Several work with government experimental stations to develop a breed of beef cattle resistant to tropical diseases. Some are private farmers working their own small farms with notable success. Many are government agricultural agents teaching their countrymen things they themselves learned at Zamorano. Others teach at governmental agricultural colleges to train still more young men in the skills of tropical agriculture. This, then, is the Pan American School of Agriculture, where young men learn modern farming and animal husbandry and develop the desire to possess and to own their own farm. But of equal importance, they learn to appreciate the God-given urge in all men to be free from regimentation by the state or by any other individual or any group. Rarely are graduates employed by the company, 
Every student is expected to return to his own country, to teach his own people what he has learned, and to become a leader in free enterprise in his own community. No wonder the agents of international communism in Central America would like to destroy the company that finances and maintains the Pan-American School of Agriculture. It's easy to understand, therefore, why the Kremlin hates bananas. <laughs>